Okay guys, welcome back. In the last video we saw, uh, we had a, a, a quick look back at uh, some Pythagoras' theorem. We heard about the story of Pythagoras. Uh, today in this video we're going to look at the trig ratios. Now there's a great, depending on how you define great I suppose, there's a great story about how the, the, the different trig ratios get their names. But I'm going to save that maybe for a little bit further down the track when we start to look at uh, some of the trigonometric functions and um, uh, and, and how we, we extend beyond triangles, right? So when we start to look at, uh, at ideas, you might have seen before, you might have seen when you did the unit circle in year 10, but we're going to look at when we when we go back to, to visit that after we finish looking at triangles and we look at angles uh, that, are, that are larger than, than uh, 90 degrees and, and again, you know, even bigger than 180 degrees going around the circle. We're going to look at how it is that the ancient Greeks came up with these names that we use, right? So the sine, the cosine, uh, the tangent, uh, and then the reciprocals of those functions. So we'll, we'll see that down the track. For now, we're just going to do a little bit of nuts and bolts so that we can go away and do exercise uh, 5A and 5B, or in the extension book, uh, 6A and 6B, right? So, um, so just some nuts and bolts on, on working with the sine, cos, and tan ratios. So, look, just uh, uh, again, a, a revision of ideas that we've seen in the past, based on a right angle triangle, where we call one of the acute angles, so acute angles mean uh, less than 90 degrees, so a right angle triangle obviously got a right angle in it, uh, and both of the other angles are acute angles. So if we uh, pick on one of those angles and give it the Greek name theta, uh, theta is a Greek letter, makes the th sound in English, so this, that, them, they, other, further, okay, so every time we see the, the th sound in English, that's the sound that the Greek letter theta makes. Uh, and we use Greek letters in, in trigonometry as a bit of a, a hat tip to the Greeks who did so much work uh, in trigonometry uh, uh, back in the day, right? So we call one of the acute angles theta, and then based on the location of our right angle and theta, we name the three sides of the triangle. So uh, across from the right angle, we've got the hypotenuse from good old Pythagoras days. Uh, adjacent to the angle theta, we've got the adjacent side because mathematicians have got no creativity and couldn't come up with a better name. And then here opposite the angle theta, Again, no creativity, couldn't come up with a better name. We call this the opposite side. Okay. Uh, now, I said we're going to get into it later on, but based on uh, uh, different ratios we can put together, we've got uh, these three uh, trig ratios, or trigonometric ratios. The sine ratio, sine of theta, is the opposite over hypotenuse. Cos of theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan of theta is the opposite over the adjacent. Again, ideas we saw back in year nine. Uh, when I teach this to year nine kids, I outline these five steps. Uh, and I say, and I insist that whenever they're doing right angle uh, uh, trigonometry, uh, 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 sorry, uh, a trigonometric ratio questions, so sine, cos, or tan questions with right angle triangles, that they go through these five steps. Step one is look at the, the triangle and ask yourself what sides are involved in this in this triangle then ask yourself which ratio uses those sides if you look carefully if you've got three sides well there's three different ways of picking two of those sides right? you can pick these two that's one way you can pick those two that's another or you can pick these two okay there's three different ways of picking two sides out of out of three right so every ratio uses uh, those, like the, you know, two of those sides. So opposite and hypotenuse, we're talking about the sine ratio. Adjacent and hypotenuse, we're talking about the, co the cosine ratio. Opposite and adjacent, we're talking about the tan ratio. So we ask ourselves what sides are involved, which ratio uses those sides, okay? And then we write down that ratio. Once we've written the ratio down, we carefully substitute. And then once we've carefully substituted, we solve. And when we come to solve uh, the expression that we end up with, 
well, that's when we end up with um, uh, those three kinds of problems I mentioned uh, in our introductory video, where we've got an unknown numerator, or an unknown denominator, or an unknown angle. Okay, so we're going to see those now um, in these three examples that I've got up. So we're going to go through those five steps for each of these three examples. Now, I'm going to include as well in our uh, in our OneNote um, a, uh, a handout that I that I wrote about 13 years ago now um, that goes through all of these uh, it goes through three examples for each of these. Uh, 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 different kinds of problems, uh, unknown numerators, unknown denominators, unknown angles. Uh, and it, it'll we'll show you how each of those apply for every uh, one of the ratios. But uh, as, a, as a basic summary, whenever we're working with an unknown numerator, our solution is going to involve a multiplication. When we're working with an unknown denominator, we're going to, uh, our solution is going to involve a, a, a swap, and I'll explain that when we come to it. And when we're working with an unknown angle, then our solution is going to involve an inverse function. And again, I'll explain that when we come to it. So let's go through following these five steps uh, and answer, uh, you know, find the unknown in each one of these cases. So in example one, uh, we're given this triangle. We've got uh, X on the, uh, the uh, adjacent side here, seven is the opposite, and 40 degrees is our angle. So what sides, step one, what sides, what sides are involved in this uh, this uh, problem here. Well, we've got the opposite and the adjacent. Okay. Well, which ratio uses opposite and adjacent? Well, here we've got the three ratios, and we see that the tan ratio uses opposite and adjacent. Okay. Step three, write down the ratio. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Step four says to carefully substitute. So don't skip that step, please write down the ratio because if you accidentally get it wrong and you do everything else correctly, uh, at least uh, an examiner can see, oh, look, they, 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 you know, they thought they had the opposite and the, the hypotenuse or whatever, um, but have they done everything else correctly? Do you know what I mean? So at least, uh, at least write down the ratio and then substitute correctly. So let's go. So uh, theta is our angle. So tan 40, our opposite side is 7, uh, oh, hang on a second, I'm going to, forgive me, I'm going to change our, our, our problem here because we're going to end up with, we're going to end up with uh, an unknown numerator, uh, an unknown denominator, I want an unknown numerator, okay. so. Um, and I'll just change these guys around as well. Uh, oh, sorry, I had that right. Forgive me. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, let's come back over here. Sorry about the little, little hiccup there. So my opposite side is X. And my adjacent side is 7. Okay, so I carefully substituted tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Theta was 40. Uh, my opposite was x. And my adjacent was 7. If I want to get x by itself, well, I need to get rid of the 7. The 7 is dividing, so I multiply. When I've got an unknown numerator, my solution involves multiplication. So x is going to be 7 multiplied by tan 40. Okay, I'll go to my calculator for that one. 7 multiplied by the 10 of 40 is 5.9 units. To one decimal place. Okay, I hope that uh, that fits on, on, uh, on screen there, but 5.9 units to one decimal place. Okay, so um, let's come on to our, ne our, our second question. Let's forgive some of the background noise, folks. Working from home, just like you guys. Uh, so I go through my five steps. What sides are involved? Well, I've got the opposite and I've got the hypotenuse. Okay, which ratio uses those sides? Well, opposite and hypotenuse is going to be the sine ratio. 
So I, step three says write down the ratio. So I write down the ratio. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Step four says carefully substitute. So I carefully substitute. My theta is 25. My opposite side is four. My hypotenuse is X. Now I've got an unknown numerator. Okay, little algebra trick. Um, think about something that you already understand about uh, about division. Okay, so if I said to you, look, you know that uh, 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 say four was equal to twelve divided by three, you wouldn't disagree with that. Okay, that makes sense. Well, if I said, well, uh, is it also true that three equals twelve divided by four? Well, yeah, obviously. So what have I done? I mean, algebraically, what's happened between here and here? Well, I took the left-hand side and the denominator, and I've just swapped them. Okay? So this is exactly what I'm going to do here. Sine 25 is 4 over x. Well, I'm just going to swap the denominator and the left-hand side, just like I swapped the denominator and the left-hand side here. Okay? So x is 4 divided by uh, sine 25. Okay, so you see when we've got an unknown denominator, our solution involves a swap. Okay, so let me punch that into my calculator. I've got 4 over the sine of 25. That gives me 9.5 to one decimal place. So 9.5 units to one decimal place. Okay, pretty straightforward. And my last example over here, I'm going to go through my steps again. Step one, what sides? Well, if I have a look, I've got the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Which ratio? Well, if I have a look, adjacent and hypotenuse is the cos ratio. I'm going to write it down. So uh, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Carefully substitute. Theta I don't know. So cos of theta is 5 over 9. Okay, so now we need to work out what theta is. Uh, great story uh, that, I, that I sometimes tell. Um, when I, uh, I, I've always sort of told this story as I, as I teach um, trigonometry, right angle trigonometry. I talk about how uh, uh, theta, uh, sorry, uh, uh, sine, cos, and tan rather, uh, operate on theta. They do something to theta. Okay, so cos comes along and does something to theta, and the result of that is five on nine. Okay, so I, I liken it to an example. I say, oh, well, uh, imagine if I came along uh, an egg, a fry pan, and a hot plate. Well, I can do a function on the egg using the fry pan and the hot plate, okay? I can crack the egg, I can mix it up, uh, I can put it in the, in, the, in, the, in the fry pan, I can sit that on a hot plate, and I'll end up with a scrambled egg, okay? So, cos comes along if you like, uh, it, 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 you know, it, it cooks up our egg, our theta, and it produces five over nine, okay? If I want to undo that process, right? So if I start off with an egg, I go through and I scramble it, I end up with scrambled eggs. If I want to undo that process and go back from my scrambled eggs to my egg, well, what do I need to do? When I ask that question, of, you know, I'd often ask that, that, that question in my classes and about 15 years ago, I taught uh, and there was a kid in class uh, named Damien and uh, Damo said, oh, that's easy, I can unscramble an egg. And everybody laughed, you know, don't be silly, Damo, how can you unscramble an egg? He goes, it's easy. I said, Damo, tell me, how do you unscramble an egg? And he said, I'd feed it to a chicken. Uh, that was, of course, a brilliant answer, right? Because that'll unscramble your egg, right? You feed your scrambled egg to a chicken and you, you wait a little while and your chicken will give you back an unscrambled egg, right? It'll, it'll turn that... Uh, a protein that it's, that it's taken in and, and turn it into an egg. So, but notice the, the, I mean, the brilliance of Damien's answer isn't just that he'll turn a, uh, a scrambled egg back into an egg, but notice that he's not doing the same process again that he did to get his scrambled egg to unscramble it. 
So he's not coming along to his egg and sticking it back on a hot plate and putting heat onto it and, 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 and trying to tear it apart again. He's not doing the same thing again. He's doing something that reverse, something different that reverses the process. It's the same thing with inverse trig uh, 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 functions. So cos has operated on theta to give me five over nine. I need to do something different to cos, right? I need to do the opposite of cos, okay? Now on my calculator, if you look really carefully and it'll be the same on your calculator, I'll try to get that uh, zoomed right in there for you and I'll hope like crazy that that focuses. Okay, if you look just above the sine, cos and tan, in, in yellow normally, at least on the Casios, there's a little sine to the negative one, a cos to the negative one, and a tan to the negative one. Now that doesn't mean, uh, was I even pointing at the right, front, right keys then? Yep, because of course I can't see. <laughs> I'm just, yes, there he is, sine, cos, tan. So sine to the negative one above that, cos to the negative one above that, and tan to the negative one above that. Um, it doesn't mean to the power of negative one. It's actually a, uh, a mathematical shorthand way of writing an inverse function. Okay. So if cos of theta gave us five on nine, to get back to theta, we need to do the inverse cos. Okay. And we do that to, to the five on nine, right? So we need to reverse the process of making our scrambled eggs, and we reverse the process on the scrambled egg. So here's our scrambled egg. We reverse the process, so cos to the negative one. And of course, if this was sine, we'd use inverse sine. If it was tan, we use inverse tan. So the inverse cos of five over nine, okay? Uh, on our calculator, it's a matter of uh, pressing, on a Casio, it's shift and then cos on a, uh, a um, a sharp, if you're still unfortunate enough to be using one of them, uh, it's shift, it's second function rather. So uh, second function cos or shift cos, and then I enter my fraction 5 over 9 uh, equals, whoops, let me try that again, shift cos 5 over 9 equals, here we go. Uh, so we've got uh, uh, I'll, I'll hold that up. We've got 56.2 something degrees, but of course, if we want to answer in uh, degrees and minutes, say, uh, then we need to use uh, the degrees, minutes, seconds button. Uh, sometimes people affectionately call it on a Casio the bubble button. So if I press that, it'll tell me that that's uh, 56 degrees and 15 minutes. Okay. So uh, our answer. So theta is. 56 degrees and 15 minutes to the nearest minute. Okay, guys, that's uh, pretty much everything we need to know to do exercise uh, 5A or 6A in the uh, uh, extension uh, book. Um, if uh, you have no problems going through those, I'd like you to, to press on and have a go at exercise 5b or 6b in the extension book and that looks at applications of these right so there's no new mathematics nothing new in the mathematics that applies these things all they do now is they come along and instead of just drawing a vanilla flavored triangle uh, the textbook will have a ladder leaning up against the wall or you know somebody who walks on a particular in a particular direction around a field and they're giving you, all they're doing is describing a triangle for you. So no mathematics, just comprehension. So have a go uh, at uh, uh, exercise A in, in the, the relevant chapters, five for advanced and six for extension. Uh, and if you sail through that with, with that, any questions at all, shoot me problems uh, through in, now that we're working with OneNote, shoot me problems uh, in OneNote, shoot me problems via email, however you want on teams it doesn't matter however you want to get your question through to me send your questions in and i'll, I'll uh, give you some solutions uh, once you get through those all chapter five uh, all uh, chapter 5b or chapter 6b is about exercise 5b and uh, exercise 6b rather uh, are about uh, applications of those ideas just these ideas uh, pythagoras theorem 
and finding unknown numerators, denominators and angles uh, using the trig ratios. Uh, get stuck into that. Any questions at all, let me know. I'm here to help guys. I appreciate the work you're putting in. Keep it up.